Second Chronicles chapter 20. And it came to pass after this, that we just read, also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, those are lots of children, in relation to Israel, and with them other besides the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. So here comes an enemy, want to start a battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this, on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Ezra which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared, I would too, and set himself to seek the Lord. There's the importance. You can have fear. I mean, listen. You know, you wake up, you smell smoke, you start seeing a, an orangey yellow kind of flickering on the wall, you're going to fear. And I'd be praying to God as I call 911. You're going to fear when the doctor says, uh, I need you to come into my office. You need to be praying. I mean, we're not without fear. Fear is something in life. What do we do with that fear is what's in trouble, what gets us in trouble. We ought to turn to God. And proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. No food, no water. We're serious. This is serious prayer time. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. A nation, revival in prayer, in fear, in fasting, to God, help. Excellent. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. In unison, coming to God for God's help. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord there at the temple, before the new court. So all the congregations come to the temple where God's dwelling for the Jews are. And said, O Lord of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, twelve tribes, that's who he is, art not thou God in heaven? He is. And rules not over all the kingdoms of the, of the heathen? He does. And uh, Satan is also in that power, but Satan's got the power to what God gives him. Satan turned to Jesus and said, I'll give you all this if you bow down before me. And Jesus did not rebuke Satan. Remember, Satan's power is limited. God's power is unlimited. And in thy hand, is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand it? He just had a battle with the Ethiopians a couple chapters ago. And phew, that, was a, that was a wonderful victory for Israel. Art not thou our God, Israel? Judah, you know, talking about Israel. Who didst drive out the inhabitants of the land before thy people Israel, Joshua, and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend, forever. Look at him run to history. Look at him counting the many blessings of Israel, naming them one by one. That's what we ought to do. And when we got troubles and problems, we're like, oh, you're God, you're the one that, you, you helped me in this situation. You gave me the victory in this situation situation this over here man lord god you did wondrous i got present day problem lord as you helped then help now and gave it to thy seed abraham thy friend forever imagine being a friend of god and they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name saying if when evil cometh upon us as the sword war judgment or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house. You find this back in chapter 6, verse 12 on, when Solomon is praying, dedicating the temple. He knows what Solomon said. 
He knows the prayer of Psalm that, hey, if we get in trouble, if we come to this house, we reach out to you, God, you're going to answer us. We're coming repenting. For thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction. Then thou wilt hear and help. Look at that confidence. Look at that faith. God hasn't done nothing yet. That's faith. And now, behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade. That's the first time that word shows up, invade. Lord, when we're coming to the land, you told us, leave that land. That land was their land. Now, we could seek permission to walk through it, but they didn't give us permission. But we had no wars with them. When they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Israel didn't do them no harm. Behold, I say, how are they rewarded us? To come to cast us out of thy possession which thou hast given us to inherit we didn't touch them we didn't do battle with them we turned away from them and what are they doing for our help to them are not battling with them they're giving us a battle they're giving us a war they're going to take our landlord we didn't touch them but they want to touch us and what Jehoshaphat is saying is very true but I say, how they rewarded us to come to cast us out of thy possession. They didn't cast out the Moabites and the Ammonites. They left them, which thou hast given us to inherit the land. O our God, which thou, wilt thou not judge them? Fine. You know, are they right? Are they wrong? Are they guilty? Are they innocent? For we have not, we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. What are we going to do against these armies? We're nothing. Lord, we're being humble. Neither know we what to do. Pick up a sword and start fighting. And that's not the point. That's not Jehoshaphat running to the gun store to buy guns. When he says we don't know what to do, I mean, he knows. Get on the horses, get the chariots, get the swords, get the spears, get the arrows, go fight. He knows that. But neither know what to do. He doesn't know what God wants them to do. You know, God up to now has had so many weird battles. A battle he told the Israelites, just march around the city a couple times. Don't lift up the spear. Gideon, you put those pictures over your arm and you cry the sword of the Lord in Gideon. You just stay right here and watch them kill each other. An angel of the Lord comes one time and just wipes out the army. Another time they look upon the valley, they see blood. What they think is blood, they think that they killed themselves, they go start spoiling, and they end up in, in Israel's hands and Israel just starts clobbering them. A big giant comes up to David, man, he's got the sword, he's got the spear, he's got the armor, and David's got a rock. So Jehoshaphat, knowing the history of Israel, says, God, what miraculous way are you going to defend us now? That's what he's saying. We don't know what you want us to do, and we're not going to do nothing until you tell us what to do. So God's going to get the glory. But our eyes are upon me. And all Israel stood before the Lord, and their little ones, their wives, and their children, family. Family. Then upon Jezreel, the son of Zachari Zachariah, the son of Benai, the son of Jehu, the son of Methaniah, make sure I know who this guy is, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, that's the singer. Now he's not a priest. Remember, all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. And Asaph, he's the one that, in charge of singing in the music of David, came the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, in the midst of the congregation. So here they're all gathered together. They're fasting, they're praying, they're weeping, they're crying out to God. This one man, here he is. The Holy Spirit comes upon him. And he said, right in the middle of the crowd, 
hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, and we are, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude. Don't be afraid, don't worry. Hey, God's got it. Now you see where they get this prosperity gospel out of the Old Testament? And then they have the right to preach this prosperity that God's going to bless us wonderfully great. And when we look at the life of Paul, all the disciples but John died violent deaths. They were crucified. They had their necks, uh, I mean, their heads cut off. They were dragged between two animals and their bodies were ripped apart. And you have not read Fox's Book of Martyrs, a Bible-believing, born-again Christian? You got to rightly divide, because if you don't rightly divide the Bible and study it, you're going to be made ashamed. And these people that preach this prosperity gospel, whether it's the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, God is going to make them a change. When you see the prosperity, you say, you know, we're, God's going to fight for us. He's going to give us the victory. That's for the people that are under the law. That's the people of a nation. That's the people the Bible says that, that seek after a sign. By reason is great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. There you go. I bet you that light in the faces. Tomorrow, go ye down against them. I thought you said the battle's not ours. You're going to have to still fight. But they come up. But behold, they come up by the cliff. That's the only place that word shows up. Cliff. Of Ziz. That's a weird name. Ziz. And you shall, shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeriel. That E-L is God, Jehovah. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Get ready, go against the enemy. But you're not going to fight. Boy, God does such great contradictions. You see, what are you talking about? The word? I ain't talking about the word. Jesus goes up to a man, his, his hand is lame, and says, stretch forth your hand. I can't. Stretch forth. Boing. You're going to conquer that city again. Just march around it. Gideon, here's your weapons again. A clay pot and a candle. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Stand ye still. Just stand there. God's doing it again with the children of Israel. Some kind of miraculous battle plan that would make people say, what? And see the salvation of the Lord with you. Now, what's this salvation we talk about? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved? Absolutely not. There are other salvations in the, in the Bible besides salvation by the blood of Jesus Christ. This salvation is what? Don't worry about your enemies. You're not going to need to fight. I'll give you victory. That's that salvation. There it is. It comes from God. No man's going to have anything to do with it. It comes from God. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not twice, nor be dismayed twice. Tomorrow, go out against them twice, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohites, that's the family of, of the priests, Levites, they were in charge of carrying all the holies of holy stuff. And of the children of the Kohites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. The Kohites stood up and they're just thanking God with a loud voice. They rose up early in the morning and went forth unto the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be saved. Yes. In a battle, in a war, not going to heaven or hell. 
you shall be saved. Believe in the Lord your God, ye shall be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. There's prophets hanging around. I only heard about one man God's using. Men who are telling the future. They're telling what God can do for you. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers going to battle. He gets the children of Asaph and those of him and says, listen, I need your singers over here. Up unto the Lord and that should praise the beauty of his holiness. You know, the Bible says there's no beauty that we should desire Jesus and yet he's beautiful. What is the beauty what is the beauty of the holiness of, of God? That's Jesus Christ. As they went out before the army, and to say, Peace, excuse me, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth ever. You find that throughout the Psalms. So these singers, look what it says about the singers. As they went out before the army. There's a sing about the beauty of the holiness of God. What did Jehoshaphat do? Those singers were put ahead of the army. You have this, the singers, they're praising and singing to God. And right behind them is the military men. Now that's weird. That's how much faith Jehoshaphat said. He's not putting the men with the spears up front. He's not putting the men with, with the sling stones. He's putting the singers, and they probably don't have no weapons. Some of them may be playing weapons. I mean, playing weapons. May be playing inst musical instruments themselves. The singers are in the leading group, and what their job is, praising God. And when they had began to sing and praise, the Lord set an ambush against the children of Haman. At the start of the song service, God gets going. against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Ju Judah, and they were smitten. They're singing praises Judah and Jerusalem to God, and God smiting the enemy right before them. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. They're battling themselves again. That's a tactic that God's used before. Moab and Ammon start fighting with the children of Seir. Wait a minute. Moab, Ammon, and Mount Seir were supposed to go against Israel. God turned around against each other. Utterly to slay and destroy them. When they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they wiped out the entire people that were there of Mount Seir. Moab and Ammon. Thank you for helping us. We killed you. Everyone helped to destroy another. All right. Moab, Ammon are battling Mount Seir. They, they conquered Mount Seir. They, they wiped them out. Now they start turning Moab against Ammon. Mass confusion here. What's Israel and Judah doing? Judah, I mean, Israel, the children of Oh God, what's Jude and Jerusalem doing? They're praising God just standing there. Watching God get the victory. And they're not lifting one finger. They may be even sitting there giggling like, you see, they're killing their own people. I mean, they're watching it. I don't know how far they can see each other. And they're still singing about the glory of this and the beautiness of the Lord, praising God. And when Judah came toward the watchtower, you want to mark that one, that mark, that watchtower? That's the only place that shows up in the Bible. Watchtower. Together, that watchtower. So when somebody comes to you with a watchtower magazine, you would think it'd be a thing, greatness in the Bible. It's a battle of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, and Israel does nothing. God's glory to the Jews. Guess who pretends to be Jews? 
Guess who's going to survive the, the great tribulation periods, 144,000, though they got millions and not billions of people. That's the only place Watchtower shows up, in the wilderness. They looked unto the multitude, and behold, there were, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. Judah and Jerusalem finally catches up to where, where this area is, and there's this dead body. That's it. There's no battle. Now, why would you set your words, your religion, for that? What are you trying to? What are you trying to tell me? You want me dead? And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil, you know, the guns, the money, whatever they had, of them. They found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies, gold, silver, precious jewels, which they stripped off themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days gathering of the spoil. It was so much. This is how much these three armies were. Judah and Jerusalem are loading themselves up with gold, silver, gems, food, animals, bracelets, earrings, whatever they had. And it's taken three days to strip the sling. And Jude and Jerusalem did not lift one finger to kill them. Kind of interesting to have your watchtower mention it. Is that what you want to do? You want to kill me and strip, strip me of all my goods? You think I'm a heathen? The doctors I believe of the Bible and Jesus Christ goes against them. I'm their enemy. I'm not one of their 144,000. I guess you want to kill me and take my stuff. That's where Watchtower is. That's the story of the Watchtower. The only place it shows up. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Berkshire. For there they blessed the Lord. They made the Lord happy. That's what blessed means. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the Valley of Bercha unto this day. What's it mean? It means bless. Blessings. Lord, we're happy. God, you're happy. Why is God happy? Israel's okay and protected. Not one Israelite, I mean, all the children of Judah and, and Jerusalem, not one of them was killed. Why is God happy? Because Israel's happy and they're blessing God. Why is Israel happy? They won. Then they returned every man of Judah and, and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them. Now look at that. You know who were in the forefront before? It was the singers. Jehoshaphat is marching in front of the people. He is leading the, 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 the men of the military and the musicians. He's leading them back to Jerusalem say, glory to God in the highest. And I guarantee the singers are still singing. To go to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies, dead enemies. They came to Jerusalem with psalteries and harps, so they're still singing, and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. They go, they don't go home, they go right to the house of the Lord to praise the Lord. And the fear of God was on all kingdoms of those countries, which they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. This news got around. You didn't need cable television, you didn't need a newspaper press, you didn't. The word got around. Did you just hear what the what the Jewish God did for them? These three groups of men went against Israel. And God, their God, had to kill each other. And all the children of God had to do was just go take all the spoil. Let's go get them. Uh-uh. I ain't touching them. So that victory of God, that victory of the children of Israel, of, of Judah and Jerusalem, got out. Now the people around Judah and Jerusalem are fearing God. But not Israel north. 
Israel North never got right. We'll see that in a moment. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of, of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for God had given him rest round about it, peace. No one attacked him anymore. And Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was 35 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 20 and five years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Azubah, the daughter of Shehiah. And he walked in the ways of Asa's father. Asa walked in the Lord, and then he left the Lord. Asa, his father, and departed not from it, doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Howbeit the high places were not taken away. For as yet the people had not prepared their hearts unto God of their fathers. So there's still people going to the high places worshiping other gods. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat first and last. Behold, they are written in the book of Jehu, the son of Hanani, who is mentioned in the books of the kings of Israel. And after this, this battle, you don't want to call it a battle, did Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, join himself with Asahiah, the king of Israel, Asahiah, who did very wickedly. Jehoshaphat is doing his same sin. He's joining affirmity. He's joining with the enemy of God. How well does that please God? And he joined himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish. That's where Jonah wanted to go. And they made the ships in Ezen Geber. Then Eliezer, the son of Devar, uh, Marshall, prophesied against Jehoshaphat. Say, because thou hast joined thyself with Asahiah, the wicked one, a man who loves the Lord and doing right with the Lord has joined one who is wicked. He's already done this. They have. The Lord has broken up thy works. And the ships were broken that they were not able to go to Tarshish. All that navy you just built, it's destroyed, it's gone. That's what's going to happen in the tribulation period. The Bible says one third of the ships are going to sink. They're going to be destroyed. There's going to be a, a, a compact meeting between the Antichrist and people. And God said, okay, I'll just wipe out your shipping. Shipping is important. We are not to join in with the enemies. It makes God angry. And he can set forth to destroy you. That's a Bible doctrine, no matter what testament you're in. The Bible says for the Christian, you, you may not get a ruined life, you may not get troubles and problems, but you'll get wood, hay, or stubble, and that burns up its ashes, and you lose rewards. Hebrews says that God, as our Father, can punish us, chastise us if we do wrong. Lesson is to do right. Know what's right.